you would turn over to the uh, book of Habakkuk. Since uh, last week I have uh, slept, well, fitfully, but I slept, <laughs> and I forgot where I was, <laughs> but I think what I had just finished the introduction, and then we'll start the uh, verse by verse. I usually put a mark here, but I don't see a mark, so obviously I didn't start in the verses. Before we do start, though, let's have a, a short prayer, if you bow with me, please. And Father, we pray that bless the study of thy word. We pray, Father, that we may ever hide thy word in our heart, that we may not sin against thee. And we're grateful for the examples of old and for the words that were spoken that even to this day guides us in the way of righteousness. Bless us as we continue the study. Bless us in all things that are right and feed us in evil. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. said Habakkuk was a, uh, it's a little different from the other prophet, uh, prophets, minor prophets, well, any of them really, but uh, in that he presents his, uh, the words here are a, sort of like presenting a, a lawyer presenting a court case before the judge. He, uh, has a complaint, or maybe a lack of understanding, but it's sort of a complaint, in that he doesn't doesn't understand why uh, the Lord's going to use somebody evil to do good. Now we read here in the first uh, begin the first chapter. He said the burden with the uh, which the prophet Habakkuk saw. Um, that's just burden, just what he has to do. And here's his, his uh, complaint, if you want to call it that. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? So uh, how long that's been? You know, when you want somebody to hear, you expect some sort of action. He hadn't received the action yet, so don't know how long he'd uh, been crying out to the Lord, but he hadn't heard anything. So even cry out to you uh, violence and you will not uh, save. And really here he's talking about uh, his complaint or, or the uh, things that are going on are in Judah. He's not talking about the uh, Chaldeans at the present time. He's talking about Judah. So why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? So he was Seeing things in Judah, and of course we've already been over this numerous times in the other prophets, how Judah was given over to idolatry and, and uh, how they were uh, cheating people, this, that, and the other, you know. <clears throat> Sounds like present day uh, events, I guess. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, I had a buddy and probably, uh, see, we got anybody older and buddy and. Uh, David, buddy, me, then David. That's it. Uh, but back when I was growing up, you know, we did, uh, of course, we lived out in the country, not about two miles from town, but we never locked the door. Did, did you ever lock the door? Never locked the door. I can remember one time we went off, one of the few times we ever went a trip together, went off to Arkansas because I my daddy had, a, I think, a first cousin who lived in Arkansas. We didn't lock the door when we left. <laughs> Came up, you know, weeks later. Nobody ever bothered anything. Do you lock your door now? And even then, it doesn't help. <laughs> so, But that's the way uh, Judah had become. You, you had to lock your doors. <laughs> and even then, it, uh, you uh, had uh, trouble... Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? And again, talking about Judah. For plundering and violence are before me. He's seeing all this stuff going on. There is strife and contention 
arises. Therefore, the law is powerless. Well, actually, the law is working against those who are honest. The law is powerless, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, and therefore perverse judgments proceeds. So he knows that Judah is evil. He knows that. And God's reply to this begins, the first reply begins this in, in uh, chapter, I mean, verse 5. Look among the nations and watch. And just this very simple sentence says that God will use the nations to accomplish his objectives. Be utterly astounded how I'm going to use the nations. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. For indeed I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation who marches through the breadth of the earth to, to possess dwellings that are not theirs. They were very uh, rapacious in their uh, conquest of people around them. But uh, Habakkuk couldn't see this at the time. In fact, uh, you know, we can't, we can, we think we can pre predict the future, but we can't. We can't change the past. Uh, but we can plan for the future. But uh, Habakkuk couldn't see this. He couldn't see the, that how God was going to use these nations. It also says that nations are, if you don't call it putty in the hands of God, He will use them for whatever purposes He decides that they are to be used for. But He doesn't cause them to be evil now. He doesn't cause them to be evil. They're evil on their own, but He uses that uh, for his own purposes. But uh, Chaldea, the Bab Babylonian Empire, they were going to conquer that whole area there. It says there in verse 7, they are terrible and dreadful. That was very characteristics of conquering nations by the time. It was, it was uh, characteristics of Assyria. It was characteristics of the uh, uh, Chaldeans, uh, their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. They were very high on themselves. They had a very high opinion of themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards. Their horses are always an uh, a, a instrument of war. You know, it's the tank of the uh, that day and, and the common, very common person didn't have horses like the army did, but the fact that they're swifter and than leopards means they're going to, they're going to move fast. They're chargers or horses. They charge ahead, uh, or they're, they're more fierce than evening wolves. The chargers charge ahead, and the cavalry comes from afar. They fly as the eagle that hastens to eat. They're uh, advance of their armies are going to be very swift. In verse 9, they all come for violence. Very characteristics of the uh, conquering armies at that time. Their faces are set like the east wind. Now, the east wind was a very uh, hot and dry wind that came off the desert. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean their faces are hot and dry. It just means as the east wind comes from one direction steadily and doesn't alter that, their faces are going to be set in one direction and it's coming in your direction. They're not going to look to the right or the left. They gather captives like sand, just like sand, you know, you get a bucket full of sand, there's a lot of grains of sand, they're going to have a lot of uh, captives. They scoff at kings, and princes are scorned by them. It doesn't matter to them. Kings, princes, commoners, all the same to them. They deride every stronghold. You can put up defenses, but they're not going to uh, thwart the purposes of the 
uh, Chaldeans where they heap up mounds of earth and seize it, then his mind changes and he transgresses. I think the uh, ASV has a different wording. But uh, it's kind of like he's going to be passing by very quickly. Uh, he commits offense, again, very characteristic of the uh, uh, Chaldeans and those of the heathen nations, imputing his power to his God. Now, his God was a, an idol, so he was imputing the power that he had, the military power that he had, and the conquering power to, that he had to, his, uh, to the idols. Of course, we know, and uh, the Jews knew that, or at least some of the Jews knew that idols was nothing. But this does point out that the Chaldean, Chaldean, he never had in his mind, because he didn't accept the uh, God of uh, Israel or Judah. He didn't accept the one true God. So he didn't know, the Chaldean didn't know that God was using him. He didn't know that. He was just uh, following his own desires and impulses. But that's the way God does. God will use the heathen nations for his own purposes. And here's the uh, second charge or problem or uh, thing that uh, bothered uh, Habakkuk. And he knows that, that uh, the Chaldeans are going to be the ones to uh, execute punishment on Ju Judah. And he says, are you not from everlasting? And there's two traits of Jehovah that he uh, set forth here. Are you not from everlasting? Lord, Lord, my God, my Holy One. Well, God has always existed. Even before the Chaldeans came into existence, God was there. Even before Assyria, God was there. Even before the nation of Israel, God was there. And He's a holy God. He can't be anything but that. We shall not die as long as you're with the Lord shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O Rock, you have marked them for correction. Talking about Judah. You are of pure eyes to behold uh, than to behold evil. Well, he's, he's questioning the idea that uh, God's going to use this evil nation of uh, the Chaldeans to punish uh, Judah. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously? And why are you using someone that's so wicked? And hold your tongue when the wicked devours. Well, the righteous are going to be devoured right along with the unrighteous. Said, and hold your tongue when the wicked devours. One more righteous than he. Well, Judah, if you take the totality of Judah, it was not righteous. Now, there were righteous within Judah, and perhaps Judah was not as evil as the Chaldeans or the Assyrians for that matter, but still, they're going to suffer right along the righteous going to suffer right along with the unrighteous. He said, why, why are you using these uh, really evil people? Why do you make men like fish out of the sea? Now, if you, uh, I've never fished much at all, certainly not with a net, but when a, a uh, fisherman throws out a net to catch fish, what fish does he catch? catches anything that comes into the net. <laughs> now, there may be some very good fish there and some really, really evil fish, but they all get caught. Like creeping things that have no ruler over them. Uh, these creatures that he's talking about, and of course, in this case, it's going to be Judah, they have no one to protect them. There's not going to be a king that's going to protect them. They take them all, they take 
up all of them with a hook and catch them in their net and gather them in their drag net. I, th I think a net and drag net are two different kinds of nets. And therefore they rejoice and are glad. The, those who do the catching are glad. Therefore they sacrifice to their net. And the net's just an object. In this case they're really talking about their idols. It's just an object. It's used in the hands of men. It has no, no uh, ability to do anything on its own. And they burn incense to their dragnet. Uh, dragnet. They're, they're really uh, uh, lauding their power, the power that they possess. Because by them, the, the nets, uh, their share is sumptuous. They, they capture a lot. They catch a lot. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity? Well, when are they going to stop? He says in chapter 2, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he shall say to me and what I will answer when I am reproved. So he's expecting an answer. He's not actually going to sit up on a tire and, you know, to watch. He's just saying, I'm waiting for the answer. In God's uh, second reply, the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. It's not going to happen right now. There's going to be you're having a vision, but it's not going to happen right now. So write it down that people, when this happens in the future, the people can read this. And uh, the vision is yet for an point in time. It's in the future. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Whatever is written down, the vision is going to be true. Though it tarries, wait for it. Again, it's not going to happen immediately. It's going to be in the future. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Well, he said it, it's going to tarry, then he said it's not going to tarry. He's just saying it, it's going to happen. Behold the proud. That's Again, now it's talking about the Chaldeans. His, his soul is not upright in him, but the just just shall live by faith. Now this uh, term, like we have, uh, some versions have the righteous shall live by, by his faith. But you know, being righteous doesn't mean that you can see everything in the future, that you can work out all the details of what uh, the Lord is, is doing uh, providentially. You, you can't necessarily work that out in your mind. So if you are living uh, a righteous life, which is a faithful life, then you're going to have confidence in the Lord and do what He tells you to do when He tells you to do it. And then you'll leave those matters to Him. You'll wait on the Lord. Indeed, Verse 5, deed because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, and he does not stay at home because he, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to use uh, wine to uh, transgress the Chaldean. He's maybe using it, uh, uh, what wine does to somebody as a means to control the people. He's a proud man, does not stay at home. Uh, because he enlarges his desire as hell and is like death and cannot be satisfied, he gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. Again, talking about the Chaldeans. Now, how many people, uh, when is uh, hell full? When is death 
satisfied with the number of people that have died. <laughs> it, there is no end to it. And same thing with the Chaldeans. He's never satisfied. He, he'll accept, uh, he'll conquer anybody that he can, any time that he can. And he gathers himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. It doesn't matter who it is, where they are, the Chaldean wants to conquer them. And here we have the next uh, section. Uh, well, it goes on down for a number of verses. There's five woes that are set forth. And he says, Shall not these, that's the, that's the, those are conquered nations, shall not all these take up a proverb against him, the Chaldeans, and a taunting riddle against him, and say, and again, these, whoever's left of these conquered nations when, you know, um, Chaldea is finally meets their end, they're going to uh, have a proverb against him and a taunting riddle against him. They say, Woe to him who increases what is not his. How long? Uh, how long is not answered? And to him who loads himself with many pledges, and uh, typical of these, some of these people, uh, these nations, Chaldeans, to make promises, but it didn't matter to them. They never fulfill the promises. Woe to him who increases uh, what is not his, how long, and to him who loads himself with many pledges. Will not your creditors rise, rise up suddenly? Uh, there comes a day of uh, when the uh, tally sheet's going to be added up, and the creditors, he's taking these pledges, so he becomes a, a debtor to these creditors, and, and he, one of these days, these creditors are going to rise up. Will they not awaken to oppress you, and you will become their booty? All these things that the uh, these conquering nations, uh, Chaldea, all these things that they took from these nations around about them, that's going to end up as plunder, uh, booty for someone else. And of course, we know from history that the Middle Persian Empire is the one that destroyed uh, Babylon. Because you have uh, plundered many nations, you become their booty for three reasons here it gives. Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people shall plunder you. Second reason, because of men's blood, you know, you've shed a lot of blood. And the third uh, reason, and the violence of the land and the city and all who dwell in it. Uh, you know, whenever these conquering armies went through the land, they destroyed more than just the uh, people. And you know, they destroyed a lot of the infrastructure and a lot of the animals, and they made, uh, destroyed the agriculture and all sorts of things. So that, that's another woe reason that these nations are going to uh, eventually oppress the Chaldeans. Second woe is woe to him who covets evil gain for his house, that he may set his nest on high like an eagle. Uh, a high nest is, is one that's secure, or supposedly secure. And the Chaldeans had conquered all these nations and taken all that stuff and to uh, furnish their own houses, that he may be delivered from the power of disaster. Well, he wasn't going to be delivered from the power of disaster. That was just his aim. You gave shameful counsel to your house, cutting off many peoples, and sinned against your soul. Even though these were heathens, they still sinned. For the stone will cry out from the wall, and the beam from the uh, timbers will answer it. So, let's just take uh, Babylon, for example. They had uh, stone walls, and then they had, somehow within the structure, they had these timbers that they gave it uh, 
the structural integrity, and so forth. But these were built with the blood of people. And so they were tainted. So these stand, stones are going to cry out. They're going to cry out for, for justice and the beams that hold them together. They're going to be in agreement with the uh, stones. Third woe is woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed. That's, that's uh, slave labor. They use a lot of slave labor. Who establishes city by iniquity. Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people's labor to fend, feed the fire and the nations weary themselves in vain for the earth is filled, will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord and as waters cover the, the uh, sea. So the prophecies when it says the knowledge of the glory of the Lord it's talking about the prophecies that have been spoken of here. They're going to be fulfilled. And Babylon, the Babylonians are going to be destroyed. And we are going to start verse 15 next week. Lord willing.